didn't hear you come in. Well, I sort of did hear you come in. That's why I need to say I didn't hear you come in. But I have a treat for you today. This is called, where is it? This is called Stalking is Love. And it's by Cypher. Today is a story about love and stalking. <laughs> so do you remember that trick that Diamanda tried in her Raspberry Ripe review where she followed that good looking girl? Alright, so the girl who pushed her down the stairs might not have been in the right frame of mind for the gloriousness that is Diamanda. But as soon as she saw the nostalgia chick standing next to the nostalgia critic, well, no, not standing next to him, standing over him, having just chloroformed him. Diamanda knew that she and the chick would be absolutely perfect for each other. The chick chloroformed people and Diamanda shot them. Both of them reviewed shitty media. It would be a match made in heaven. Of course, Diamanda knew to proceed with caution. Everyone who was anyone knew that it was best to proceed with caution when it came to the chick. Chloroform induced nap times were usually not that much fun, especially when you were staying in a hotel in the middle of Chicago on obscure loop was good word, and surrounded by that guy with the glasses in a sort of test run. Also, the chick was known to hold a grudge and to pay it back in creative ways, and one probably didn't want to think about it. But it was the trope that worked in fiction, and sometimes fiction echoed real life. Or maybe she'd just been distracted with the glorious sight of Mars girl in a low-cut top, and the nostalgia chick with her boot on the back of the critic's neck. So she followed the chick around the hotel, making sure to stay just out of sight. It worked pretty well for the majority of the evening. The chick played DDR, Diamanda shot zombies. The chick ate dinner with Mars Girl and that chick with the goggles and Diamanda sat at the bar. It was only when she followed her on the empty stairwell and upon reflection it was a bad idea considering what had happened the last time she propositioned someone on the stairs were involved and the chick seemed to catch on. You know I can see you right, that makeup of yours practically glows in the dark. The chick leaned against the wall of the landing between the fifth and sixth floor, smirking somewhat. Well, the chick was always smirking, wasn't she? Snarkiness was part of the chick's charm. That and her assets. Round, firm assets. You're also staring at my tits. The chick snapped her fingers in front of Diamanda's face. My eyes are up here. Diamanda cleared her throat, somewhat unnerved. The nostalgia chick's bluntness was quite different from the usual cowering minions. Oh, I get it. The chick nodded, sagely. Yeah, I saw your Raspberry Reich review. So it's like that, is it? She leaned back against the wall, spreading her arms open and arching her back. All right, it worked. So we fuck now, right? Diamanda opened her mouth. Diamanda closed her mouth. And then she shrugged and stepped closer to the chick until they were almost touching. So, do you want me to fuck you? No, duh. Or do I have to get a flash neon sign that says, Diamanda Hagen, please fuck me? No, that's not necessary. Diamanda said, putting her hands on the chick's shoulders. Very good, the chick said, and stood on tiptoe, kissing Diamanda on the mouth and threading her fingers through her hair. Diamanda kissed her back, noting in the back of her mind that her makeup was smearing on the chick's face. The chick was a good kisser, and her tricky fingers were clever as they threaded through Diamanda's hair. Her tongue was stroking against Diamanda's. When they broke for air, the chick was smirking, looking far too smug for someone with smudged clown makeup all over her face, and far too sexy too. Maybe it was the way that her eyes were half masked and her lower lip was sticking out in such a way that it took a lot of effort not to lean forward and to kiss her right there and then. So, aren't you going to ravish me? The chick tugged gently on Diamanda's hair. After all, You've been following me around all night. Shouldn't we find a more private place? It would be awkward if they got caught. Very awkward. Diamanda had already been reprimanded for shooting one of her minions in the foot for dropping her luggage. The chick pouted harder. Where's the fun in that? She wrapped her fingers around her neck gently and traced her collarbone with one finger. Don't you want me? Oh, of course I want you. 
Diamanda said defensively. But we're in the middle of a rather drafty stairwell right now, and I thought you would have preferred me to ravage you in a place where you're not in danger of being walked on by a bunch of haughty bastards while I put you into uh, paraplysms of ecstasy. You really think that you could send me into paraplysms of ecstasy? Overestimating your own talents there, aren't we? The nostalgia chick waggled her eyebrows, or at least she tried to. It wasn't easy to pull off. You're trying to annoy me into fucking you? Diamanda pressed her forehead against the chick, smearing more makeup on her face and not caring. Yep. The chick rocked her hips forward, grinding against Diamanda. I'd say you'd best hurry up before some drooling fanboys come along. Diamanda rolled her eyes and kissed the chick, mainly to shut her up. She let go of the chick's shoulders, roughly grabbing her breast with the thin fabric of her shirt and kneading it. You're a real brat, you know that. She mumbled against the chick's mouth, tugging the short woman's nipple between her two fingers and sliding her hand down the chick's belly. The critic's worse, the chick said, smirking up at Diamanda through her lashes. Yes, but I don't have my hands on the front of your trousers now, do I? Diamanda tweaked at the chick's nipple, scrabbling at the bottom of the chick's jeans. You don't have your hand on the front of my... Oh. The chick trailed off, squeezing her eyes shut and arching her back when Diamanda thumbed her clit. You shouldn't speak preemptively, dear, Diamanda said, her voice sticky sweet and syrupy. The chick grabbed a big handful of Diamanda's hair, twisting it around her fist and tugging on it. Fuck! She managed to gasp out, her hips rocking forward each time Diamanda applied pressure to her clit. It's what I'm doing. Diamanda said sweetly. I'd go down on you, but I don't think you want makeup all over your trousers. It's bad enough that it's all over your face. She stroked the chick, gently. You're soaking wet, you are. What's brought that on? A bit of kissing is nice, but it doesn't leave you that wet. Been thinking about, about you watching me. The chick pouted, the hand not fisted in Diamanda's hair, yanking at her shirt more to do something with her hand than anything else. Oh, you liked me watching you, did you? You naughty girl. Diamanda wriggled her hand into the chick's knickers and thumbed her clip directly, sliding two fingers into her. You weren't kidding. You're sopping wet. You talk too much. The chick mumbled, pulling Diamanda in for another kiss, whimpering against the other woman's mouth every time Diamanda thrust into her, becoming more high-pitched when those fingers curled, pressing right there. You want to talk? Diamanda said amicably. Usually when I'm in the throes of passion, I'm less with the witty banter and more with the fucking! She was having entirely too much fun with this. The chick always seemed to be having fun. It was part of her appeal. What can I say? The chick rolled her hips, forcing Diamanda's finger further into her and biting her lip. No doubt at the onslaught of sensation, she started to sweat, making her bits of makeup smudged across her face run ever so slightly. Diamanda could feel her own makeup starting to run, her hair sticking to her face. Oh, many things. For example, Diamanda twisted her fingers inside of the chick, making her yip like a puppy. Well, you could say, oh my god, dear Amanda, you're going to make me come. Or, holy shit, dear Amanda, how do you do those things with your fingers? Another twist, and she smirked the way the chick went rigid. Or you could just moan a lot and leave claw marks on my shoulders. You are a smart ass. The chick gasped, yanking Diamanda's hair, digging her fingers into Diamanda's shoulders. No claw marks as of yet. Diamanda's shirt was in the way, but she was doing her damnedest to leave her mark. I like yours better, Diamanda said, letting go of the chick's breast to grab her ass and pull her closer, kissing her again and doing something with her fingers that made the chick's knees buckle and her back arch. Diamanda held the chick as she shook and shuddered, watching the chick's face as she came. She only withdrew her fingers when the chick went slack, making a big show of bringing them up to her mouth and licking them clean. The chick rolled her eyes, nudging Diamanda half-heartedly with her foot. You win. Your technique works. I knew it would work, Diamanda said, helping the chick rebutton her pants. Why don't you and me find some place more private? 
But if you go somewhere private, then I wouldn't be able to serendipitously walk in on you two and be perfectly up for a threesome. Diamanda looked over her shoulder, well aware of her disheveled appearance and the rather incriminating position she was in. Except the person behind her was Mars Girl, and she was... Oh boy. It's not what it looks like. Diamanda tried, well aware of how stupid that sounded. Yes, it is. The nostalgia chick said, gingerly feeling her face. What took you so long? I had to shake off a fanboy. Mars Girl said. Did you start without me? You snooze, you lose. The chick said, standing up straight and dusting her arse off. Excuse me. What? The Amanda blinked, trying hard to think through the fog of arousal that was making it hard to string two words together. We sort of, kinda planned this. Mars Girl said, draping her arms around Diamanda's shoulders and smearing makeup on her own cheek. Only, not exactly. Are you not exactly planned something? Diamanda blinked, still trying to think straight. Why don't you ask me that later? Mars Girl leaned down and kissed Diamanda, smudging more makeup. Cause, I mean, we can stand around here and talk, or we can go into your room and fuck like weasels. She traced the line of Diamanda's throat with the tip of her finger, making her shiver. So, just to get this clear, you were stalking me when I was stalking her. She shook her head to clear it, and then began to laugh. You know, if this was a movie, I'd be yelling at the screen. She told the both of them, still snickering. Reality is unrealistic, the chick said lazily, kissing Diamanda chastely on the mouth. If we're talking tropes, I'm going to say this is more of a case for Xanatos Gambit, personally. Maskell said, reaching forward and playing with the chick's hair. You are both wrong, Diamanda said, smirking like a cat. This is obviously a shining example of stalking is love, or lust, or whatever. The nostalgia chick and Maskell rolled their eyes in unison, and then Maskell wrapped an arm around Diamanda's shoulders and began to steer her towards the next floor. Diamanda grinned in spite of herself as she felt the chick absently grab hold of her hand. So some things could be learned from those god-awful movies.